Okay, class, so for the third hour of chapter 7, Hello Alkane, still we are looking at the chemical properties of Hello Alkane, right? So from our last video, we have uh, learned about the introductions between your SN1 and SN2 mechanism. Okay, please recall back for SN1 mechanism, it involves the formations of carbocation. Whereas for your SN2 mechanism, it involves the formations of your transition state. For this hour, we want to discuss about the reactivity towards SN1 and SN2 mechanism. Alright, so for question number one, arrange the following compound in order of increasing reactivity towards SN1 hydrolysis reaction. Okay, hydrolysis reactions, that means um, haloalkane is reacted with H2O. Okay, H2O is your weak nucleophile. So for SN1 mechanism, it involves the formations of carbo carbocation. So in this case, we will prefer to have a tertiary carbocation, which is formed from tertiary haloalkane, or secondary carbocation, which is formed from a secondary haloalkane. So for the example over here, uh, let's label it as structure A, B, and C. Okay, so looking at this structure, for structure A, this carbon, which attached directly with your bromine, has three carbon atoms. Therefore, structure A is your tertiary haloalkane. Structure B, the carbon attached with Br has two carbon neighbors. So for structure B is your secondary haloalkane. Whereas for structure C, the carbon which attached with your Br has only one carbon neighbor. Therefore, for structure C, is your primary haloalkane. It would be good if you can label the electrophilic side, the delta positive carbon, and the delta negative leaving group. Okay, so for every single uh, compound, we know exactly where is your electrophilic site and where is your leaving group. Okay, so we want to arrange the reactivity towards SN1 in increasing order. So the least reactive goes to the primary um, alkyl halide structure C, followed by B, and the most reactive is your structure A, which is your tertiary haloalkane. So let's look at your explanation. Tertiary carbocation is the most stable carbocation. Because the increasing number of alkyl groups will increase the stability of the carbocation. So in these questions, haloalkane A, which are able to produce the tertiary carbocation, is the most reactive towards SN1 mechanism. And we can make a conclusion that the more stable is the carbocation, the higher the reactivity towards SN1 mechanism. Okay, so let's look at our second questions. Arrange the following compound in decreasing reactivity towards SN2 reaction with aqueous solutions of ethanol, CH3CH2OH, which is also our weak nucleophile. Okay, so for a little bit of recall for our SN2 mechanism, it involves the transition state, it requires strong nucleophile, it involves the backside attack of the nucleophile, and it prefer less steric effect. So let's label the structure as S, Y, Z. And if you can identify the carbon that bearing your living group Br, all of them are primary haloalkane. Okay, the only difference is between these three structures is the steric effect. For structure Y, obviously there is no steric effect. Um, and for Z, you have the most steric effect, which is located at the carbon next to your electrophilic site. So for decreasing reactivity to an SN2 mechanism, the most reactive goes to your structure Y because it is primary alkyl halide with no steric effect, followed by structure X. And the least reactive is your structure Z because it has the most steric effect. Okay, let's look at the explanation here. All the molecules are primary alkyl halide or primary haloalkane, but the reaction rates of Z is the slowest. This is because the third butyl group that is bonded to the alpha carbon gives the greatest steric effect in Z. Okay, so which one is our alpha carbon? So alpha, we have a symbol like this. 
Okay, so which one is our alpha carbon? So you can see on your structure X, Y, Z, um, the one highlighted in blue color is actually our alpha carbon. Okay, which means the carbon next to our electrophilic carbon. So go to your next point. The steric effect make it difficult for the nucleophile to affect the alpha carbon further back in Z structure. Therefore, decreases its reactivity to an SN2 mechanism. Alright, so for question number 3, give the structure of the product when 2-chloro-2-methylbutane is react with hot alcoholic potassium hydroxide. Okay, so this is the structure of your 2-chloro-2-methylbutane. So carbon number 1, 2, 3, 4. Carbon number 2, we have 1 chloro group and 1 methyl group. So the hot Alcoholic potassium hydroxide is actually the reagent and conditions for this reaction. So this reaction is our dehydrohalogenation, the preparations of alkene. And the type of reaction is elimination. And what rules is used to predict the major product? Okay, so remember, the preparations of alkene, you need to produce alkene, the carbon-carbon double bond. Okay, so in order to predict the major product, we are using Caesar's rules. So Caesar's rules say that the major products is the highly substituted alkene. So for this reaction, if we focus on where we want to remove the hydrogen and the halogen, so look at carbon number two, we have the Cl group. And you can either remove the hydrogen from carbon number one or carbon number three. So if you remove the carbon, uh, the hydrogen from carbon number one, and the halogen for carbon number two. So this will be your minor product. Okay. And if you remove the Cl from carbon number two and hydrogen from carbon number three, you are going to create another product, which is our major product. Okay. So according to Caesar's rule, um, the highly substituted alkene is our major product. So if you would like to revise the reactions of dehydrohalogenation, that will be under the topic of preparations of alkene, chapter 5.2.